<clears throat> All right, Shalom out there, brothers and sisters. Hopefully, Lex. Okay, just trying to check out the picture. Kind of in the sun, but it looked like it's good. How's the sound? Does it sound good? Let's see here. How's the sound? Does it sound good? All right, so. As the title of the lesson says, right? Okay, brother said all good. Yeah, as the title of the lesson goes, nuclear destruction or nuclear devastation, what does it say? <laughs> if you get that quick, you know? Nuclear war and devastation is prophesied in the Bible, all right? Nuclear war and devastation is prophesied in the Bible. Nuclear devastation. Yeah, it's in there. All right. All right, so as always, back again to do another quick lesson or another lesson. I don't know how quick it's going to be, but it shouldn't be too terribly long either. There are many scriptures in the Holy Bible that chronicle, that prophesy of the coming destruction and judgment of Babylon the Great and, and overall nuclear war and fallout on the planet Earth. So first and foremost, all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakak, Wadash, double honor. To the apostles and elders of great millstone all right and as you heard the title nuclear war and devastation is prophesied in the holy bible and i invite all the brothers you know you got scriptures you want to add dealing with nuclear war devastation whatever you you know you bring out you put it up there i may get a chance to read it but if not the other brothers and sisters will be edified by reading okay reading the scriptures hey shalom elder karatazar jms vegas all right and really at this at this point Okay, brother said so he just did a lesson on it. And it's on the tip of all our tongues, as it should be. Because even though we know that the end is not uh, gonna just, you know, just come where we still got a ways to go before the end, this is on the minds of the people. The first thing that I woke up to this morning, brothers were putting up videos of, uh, you know, Esau filming his own destruction, two guys running to the bomb shelter, right, in one, in one video. Another video I saw, like an asteroid came down and, and, and messed everything up. But really just, these people know, the, the filmmakers, the uh, the people that make the movies and the films in this society, it's more than that, they're just interested in the end time theme. They know within their spirit, at some point, destruction is going to come. The most high put it in their spirit to know that destruction is going to come. Just hold on here, brother. I'm trying to see if the glare too much. Goddamn pigeons all around. Lord willing, it's okay. Is, is the glare too much? Because I can turn around to the other side if the glare is too much. So really with everything going on with uh, Ukraine and Russia, it's got people's minds are more, they're thinking about it more because they can, you can see the potential of nuclear war off in the near, in the near, uh, in the distance, but it's still near, closer than it's ever been before. And you should be worried, you should be thinking about it. And also it was in the news this week that the American media asked Joseph Biden, should Americans be concerned about nuclear war? And he said, no, he just shrugged it off, no. And let's not forget those guys on the corners and all the major cities in America, Babylon the Great, and all around the world, prophesying of a nuclear destruction coming to America, Babylon the Great, and nuclear war coming to the earth. Oh yeah, that little thing, right? So it's on all of our minds and some of the newer brothers and sisters may not understand that these things are prophesied in the Bible. You got a lot of Israelites that they love to try to disprove everything that's coming out of the scriptures. <coughs> you got guys now saying that God love everybody, right? Hebrew Israelites on the streets teaching that the most high love everybody. <laughs> and that's just Esau doing what he does, okay? Putting people up, hiring, and, and at the very least, just some, some dishonest, reprobate, wicked niggas that want to undo the truth. Men that are against the spirit of Yahweh Shai, that's all it really is. In any capacity, it's individuals that are against our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. But they're not going to prevail. Okay? So as we know, let me see here what the brother put up. And, and all different brothers doing lessons about it, talking about it. Yeah, this is our GMS Vegas sit down. Revelation 11 and 14, the second woe is past. And behold, the third woe coming quickly. In Revelation the woes, great woes, symbolizes the world wars. It says the second woe is past, and behold, 
the third woe coming quickly. So the third war, the third war to end all wars, or the war to end all wars, which is number three, is gonna come to pass. More than likely in our lifetime, I say it like that, but we really do believe it's in our lifetime. But I say it that way, so people can't say we made a prophecy and said no shit like that. No, the Bible made prophecies that nuclear war will come, okay? Bottom line, and, it, and, and it's in the Bible, it's described. It doesn't say nuclear war in the scripture. It don't say World War III in the Bible, but it talks of a day that's gonna burn as an oven, right? As the brother put the scripture up. There are different ways it's talked about in the Holy Bible. And us as the prophets of the Heavenly Father, we're supposed to tell the world, mainly the Israelites, the world of Israel, but we tell the whole world, Isaiah 34 and 1. We tell the whole world what the Lord said is gonna, have, is gonna come to pass. So real quick, let me grab a, a scripture over here. And, it's, and these scriptures are very, very, uh, very vivid about what's going to happen. And there's only a few things on the earth that can make things happen in the manner that they're written about in the scripture. All right. So first, let's get, let's go to Isaiah. You know, and I figured it was a beautiful day. You, as you can see, very sunny, kind of warm, still a little chilly, but you still got dumbass people out here with shorts on like it's summertime you got a few people out, out on the beach some some devils laying out but it's right around 70 60 it's between 67 and 70 degrees with the sunlight but it's still a little wind too so it's nice though but i still got on the sweatshirt right so this is uh isaiah chapter 9 verse 5 it says for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood but this this shit right here <laughs> But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Your regular battle is with garments, confused noise, garments rolled in blood, shields, swords, clanking against one another, right? Men yelling out, crying. Hey, shout out brother you want, brother you want a thon. In, in a regular war, men are crying out, you know, their last cries before they die, blood squirting on individuals and all that, but not this one. This shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Now over the years, you have many individuals try to disprove it, try to debunk it. Ain't no missiles in the Bible. The Lord ain't gonna use no missiles. One guy said that when you look at the most high's arrows, his arrows are the lightning, right? And then the fire is talking about his lava coming up from the ground or hailstones coming like he did Sodom and Gomorrah, right? But what hailstones can cause the old, whole earth to rock and cause a great earthquake? What hailstones can do that? When the scriptures say hailstones, it's talking about things coming out of the heavens looking like hailstone but it's not hailstone right it's burning fire coming out of the heavens fire and brimstone coming out of the mouth of these fiery flying serpents in one scripture there's many vivid scriptures that talk about it i'm going to talk less and read scriptures more now i got before i read that one so that scripture said this shall be with burning and fuel of fire and if you're a real brother or sister in the truth this should be on your mind you should be looking forward to the destruction of Babylon the Great. This is what we've been waiting for. When we go out in the streets and prophesy, we talk about the destruction of Babylon the Great. You should be excited. You should be uh, elated, almost. We can't get too high up because it's not it's not here yet, right? The scriptures say the end is not yet. But the fact that it's it's being talked about, you know, they asked Putin, I mean, uh, asked uh, Biden, should Americans be worried about nuclear war? He said, no, that's a lie. You should be worried about it. That's why you all got nuclear bunkers and shelters to go to. Uh, I did a video yesterday, uh, and uh, I was talking about an article that says Putin moves his family to a nuclear or to an underground city, so like, it, like, like a bunker, right? It's being talked about in the media and in the news. All the celebrities, for the most part, they smart. They got underground bunkers. They got shelters they can go to. People like Kanye West, Post Malone, right? Some of the other, uh, you know, other celebrities, you hear about them. They think that the rest of the world don't know that they got nuclear bomb shelters and bunkers to try to run to. But you know what? You're not going to be able to escape. So the idea is out there. Nuclear submarines, these elites, these uh, these people that own these basketball and football teams, Jerry Jones, Robert Kraft, you know, they got these nuclear submarines and nuclear yachts, you know, that can go out and uh, the submarines, should I say, these super yachts that can turn into submarines that go under the water, they can stay out there for years at the time, or weeks at the time, not years, we at the time, they got the underwater cities, the underground cities, the bunkers, the tunnels, the shelters, they got it all, okay? 
They got it all. And if brother you want, if you watching, <laughs> they got that crazy girl that had a, her, her big toe was bleeding and she had rolled on a dog that day. We was out here. She's still walking around here on the beach. She bugged out, man. She threw. You know, that same chick. She had rope cane on the side of her dog. She bugged out. And that's also a thing. People bugging out left and right everywhere, man. So we can feel, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's her. Oh, she going up the steps now. She got the purple hair. <laughs> a big toe probably still bleeding. Anyway, uh, as we talking about, keeping it serious though, you should be excited because this is what we waiting on. This is the, the, the what the patients, what the saints are waiting for, right? I'm gonna zoom in on it if I can see it. He bugged out as hell, man. Let's go right there. He's still bugged out. I don't know how clear it's coming in, but she is still bugged out. It and poor thing, you know. But that's also a good thing too, because the Lord gonna end all the suffering of these people in Babylon, because Babylon got you through. If you a so-called white person in Babylon the Great, and you in that condition, your ass through. And the best thing for you is that the Lord just go ahead and just end your suffering, right? And he's gonna end the suffering of the Israelites by bringing suffering on Esau, Edom, and these nations, man. And Salaki, you know, you get excited and you just start, you know, doing a, you know, going in there. So let's read some of this because people don't believe it. We'll read that one again, Isaiah 9 and 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. This is going to be with burning and fuel of fire, right? And if you're a person that calls yourself a Christian, you into the Bible, you should know that nuclear destruction is prophesied in the Bible. That the Lord is going to bring a great day of judgment on Babylon the Great and on all sinners, man. That's what's coming. And you should want that because we look, we look for a new heaven and a new earth where it dwelleth righteousness. So nuclear war and devastation is prophesied in the Bible. Now let's let me speed up a little bit. Salakia. Now, vivid scriptures such as I got here, Zechariah 14 and 12. Tell your preacher in the church to read you this and break it down to you and tell the truth about what it means. It says, and this shall be the plague. And it's often called a plague in the scriptures. In Revelation, it's called a plague of hell, right? In Ezekiel 35, I think, somewhere around 39, it's called a plague of hell stones. This is the nuclear missiles raining down from the heavens, okay? It says right here, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Who is Jerusalem? This is the Hebrew Israelites, the people of the Lord, not them, the people in Israel now. Because when you go into the prophecies, it tells you that the Israelites will not go home until their Savior comes and takes them home. You ain't gonna go there first and set the land up yourself and rule the whole world. How in the hell can Jacob be ruling during the, four, uh, the, during the first earth age? You can't prove that. During the first earth age with the four major empires that Daniel saw, the four great beasts, the statue of gold, bronze, brass, silver, and all that. Jacob is not prophesied to rule during that time. So you can't be the Israelites. You've been found out. We know all about it, okay? But we'll go on. So Jerusalem is the people before us a place. The people that are on the earth in low conditions, under the curses in Deuteronomy, these are the Israelites. The Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and we also have others that are related to us around the world, right? In Vietnam, in the Philippines, in, uh, in every nation, through war or whatever. You know, our, our fathers went and left seed in those other lands, right? And they have children, and those children had children, those children had children, but they're still Israelites. Among the Punjabis, among the Iraqis, among the Irish, among the Spanish, among the British, among all the people, you have Israelites in small numbers among those people. So if they're of the elect, the Lord gonna save them too. So don't get stuck on black, okay? Black, black, black. Don't get stuck on that. It's not about the outward appearance. Anyway, Zechariah 14 and 12, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem, all our enemies. First and foremost, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man in America, Babylon the Great. Well-documented, brutal, brutal slavery endured on our people in this world. What you did to the Native Americans is not going to be overlooked by the Almighty. You can't get out of it. You're, you're, you're doomed to destruction and punishment, and you're going to be slaves in the kingdom of heaven. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. What can do that? 
Now I heard Israelites trying to say that was talking about the black plague, brother. The people was consuming. They ain't talking about the black plague. We already gave you one scripture prophesying of nuclear war, burning and fuel of fire. This one says they're going to consume while they stand upon their feet. You saw something like that with Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right? You saw that. This is talking about atomic nuclear warfare, to be more specific. Okay? There are other scriptures that are more vivid than that. Let's go to Malachi 4 and verse 1. It says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. This ain't talking about no lava. It ain't talking about no lightning bolts. It ain't talking about the earth breaking over and the fire coming out of it. It's talking about something coming from the heavens. Let's prove it real quick. Let's go to Isaiah 24. And forgive me. This is Isaiah 24 and verse. I'm going to start at verse 5. It says, The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Who is the inhabitants that it's speaking about? Sure, all people on the earth are inhabitants, but very few inhabitants have have the uh, power to do what's written next because they have transgressed the laws. We all did that. Changed the ordinance. Wait a minute. The rulers and authority, they changed the ordinance. They said the lost day is Saturday. The lost day is Sunday. This day is a holy day. This day is not a holy day, right? This should be done. That should be done. They're the ones that is speaking, that is speaking about. These ordinances that the Lord put in place, they even try to undo that. A Hebrew night or day goes from evening to evening, but these devils say the day goes from sun, that sun up the sun down. They changed the ordinance. That's just one example. There are many. It says because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. You know where it's going to. Jumping down to verse 10, Isaiah 24 and 10, it says, the city of confusion is broken down. That's what Babylon means, right? The word Babel, confusion, this is Babylon, the city of confusion. Everywhere you look here, you see confusion. Women in charge of men, children in charge of both parents, men and women being together. The woman get a sex chain, now she's a guy. The guy get a sex chain, now he's a girl. Then they get married and they knew sexes when they both should have just stayed the damn same and had a baby. This confusion, all types of confusion going on here. The city of confusion is broken down Every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is a cry for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city is left desolation, and the gate is smitten with destruction. That's what's coming to Babylon. Let's jump down a bit. Verse 17. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fled from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. Listen, for the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. This destruction is gonna come from the heavens. The windows of heaven are gonna open up. And it ain't talking about no damn dome over the earth while you bugged out flat earth people, okay? Watch a nigga job, what's wrong with the flat earth? The earth is not flat, you idiots, okay? It's been debunked many times. Anyway, the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake, right? What's gonna come out of the heavens? Burning with fire, making the earth shake. It ain't like, it ain't hailstones, literal hailstones. It's not lightning bolts, right? And in Revelation, it says it's gonna cause a great earthquake, such an earthquake that's never been seen. This is talking about nuclear destruction, right? Nuclear destruction, and every brother should feel like that. Let's go, right? That spirit get on you, let's go, man. All praise you, how about you, how shall you in a great time right now? But it's gonna get it's gonna get a little rough. But we're preparing ourselves for it. But right now, you scared and we couldn't be happier. <laughs> hey, American soldiers trembling, you afraid to go to war, you don't want to get, you know, deployed, but you shouldn't have never joined up. So maybe they're taking Right? As one brother said in the comment board, uh, what did he say? Uh <laughs> I can't remember what he's saying, but something about buttercup. I can't remember what it was. Uh I can't remember. Anyway, let's go on. So it said again, it says, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. It's a trap. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. What can make the foundations of the earth shake? This is gonna be a nuclear blast. Many nuclear blasts, unlike anything you've ever seen. It's gonna, it's gonna make the earth, as it says, we don't know if it's gonna literally shake, but you're gonna feel a great shaking. 
The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly, right? The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. It shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. Now, if you well studied, or if you were part of Great Millstone or one of, one of our affiliates, then you know that the earth is never gonna be destroyed. It means that the system is gonna be falling, right? This age is gonna be falling and from it, the, the kingdom of heaven will emerge. Not from it, but a, a new heaven and a new earth will emerge, you know, which the Most High, his son, Yahweh Shai is gonna make, okay? Many different ways that's described. It's going to be made in righteousness, remade in righteousness. It's going to be refreshed, right? Yahweh Shah said, all things, I make all things new. Same planet, new vibration, new attitude, like the old song, new attitude, right? Immortality will be present, which is going to be the Israelites. Nobody else will be immortal. That's only Israelites. But first, this old rulership has got to be taken down and destroyed. This old system of things got to go, man. Babylon the Great got to go. How's the Lord going to do? He's going to burn it. He's going to purify the planet with nuclear fire. You see? So, let's get another. Let's go to, and I'll go to the comment board, see what brothers got. Oh, we got to go back to Malachi, right? We was reading that. Let's grab that. Very vivid description. So, nuclear war is described in the Bible. We say World War III. The Bible says Armageddon, or Armageddon in the Hebrew. Malachi 4 verse 1, it says, final admonition, right? It says, for behold, the day coming that shall burn as an oven. The day coming is going to be hot. It's going to burn as an oven, right? And we can't wait to see the end of you. The word nigga and all niggas got to go. You got to go in the fire, man. No more Negroes walking around the earth. Everywhere you go playing your damn theme music from your cell phone. Like you in a like you in a video game or you in a movie, like you got theme music. What is it about this this wretched, filthy music that's got you Jake so gone, man? It's evil spirits, that's what it is. It says, For behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Very important. The nuclear destruction is not for the Israelites, it's for Esau Edom and the nations to partake in, right? Mainly for Esau, Edom, and the nations that are over here, they're going to partake in it. But if you Israelites and you don't repent, you're going to get caught in it. If you don't repent, you're going to be caught up in the nucleus of destruction. It says, and all that uh, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name, who's that? The elect, unto you that fear my name, there is hope. There is a chance for you, if you're an Israelite, there's a chance you might be among the, this group. But unto you that fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. How are they going to be ashes? What's going to turn the wicked into ashes? The nuclear destruction, the nuclear devastation prophesied is going to turn all of the wicked into ashes in Babylon the Great. The wicked is Esau eating the so-called white man. Job 9, 24, Malachi 1 and 3 through 4. Many scriptures, all kinds of psalms call these people the wicked. And it's identifiable to them only because they're the only ones that done those things that are listed in the scriptures. They're the only ones. The Chinese, Japanese, Hamites, the other nations didn't go around and paint the faces, their faces on the images. They didn't do that. They didn't change history, change the history books, move landmarks, right? Made a bunch of damn moves with their faces on the historical figures, which really is inaccurate and it wasn't them. There's only one group that did that. All the hands in the world joined together is not gonna be able to save you people out of your judgment, out of your punishment. This is prescribed under you from on high. We can't even stop it. It's already coming. The judgment is gonna come on you devils on you Edomites. You can try to run from the name, it doesn't matter. So the Lord said, you're gonna be ashes under the soles of our feet. So the elect gonna go up into the chariots, they're gonna be saved, right? The wicked and all wicked Israelites, among the wicked, right? The wicked is Esau, even the so-called white man. The sons of men, the other nation that are over here, you immigrants, and all the wicked Israelites gonna all burn in Babylon the Great together. Cause that's, hey, what else you gonna be able to do? 
when the missiles come, the lake going up. Nobody else has a ride. What's going to happen to you? You're going to get burned up. And it's prophesied in the Bible. Now I want to go. It's a lock here, brothers. I know you're putting the scriptures up, but I got to get some of these out. This is 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Now, the Most High made many promises, right? The promise is going to be fulfilled unto Jacob. He made a promise to Abraham, it was passed down to Isaac, and then it passed down to Jacob. And now they got the 12 tribes, their descendants, right? The seed of the house of Israel. The Most High is not going to make it, break his promise unto us, unto our fathers that he said, right? He's also not going to break the promise that he got in the scripture that he's going to destroy the wicked. It says, but is long suffering to us words, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All who should come to repentance? All the Israelites should come to repentance, right? Because it's written in the first Peter 1 and 1, right? To the elect scattered abroad. That's who it's talking to, the Israelites, right? It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It's going to catch all these people off guard. All you people that stole land, you stole things, right? You got rid of people on the jobs. All that damn nepotism on the job. In the plant jobs, right? You passed down the jobs, your, your relatives. You fight. How many times they fired one of us to hire their nephew or their niece or their daughter so they can be supervised and keep their, keep their foot on our necks so they can get the 401k, the house, the boat, the car, the good credit. They've been doing that to us for, for, for generations, man. And the Lord going to pay all that shit back. You spent the money. You did all the dirt. Now the Lord is going to bring that recompense. Finally, he's going to bring the recompense. We can't wait. We can't wait. And these people know. They know that the judgment of the Lord is near. And all you, we shall overcome. 1970s, 60s, black panther ass niggas ain't going to be able to stop these devils from getting their judgment. You mad at us for what the Lord is going to do. Well, keep being mad. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Gonna catch him slipping off guard, right? In which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. That great noise is what? Hailstones may cause a little, little rattling if they came, right? The lava coming up may cause a little eruption. But these nuclear missiles, they gonna cause a great noise. Lightning bolts might cause some noise, but it don't, it don't meet all the criteria. It's not gonna be with burning and fuel and fire if lightning come, if lava come, if hailstones come, which really the Lord gonna bring all of that shit with the nuclear missiles, if you can believe that. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, into which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burnt up. See that? And it's not talking about the whole planet because the scriptures say, right, one generation cometh, another generation passes away, but the earth abideth forever. That's in Ecclesiastes, I believe it's chapter 1, verse 3. I might be wrong on the exact quote. If a brother know where it's at, could you please put it up? So the Lord said this place is going to burn up. It's talking about Babylon the Great and other places that's going to get hit with the nuclear destruction. So when you see things like Ukraine and Russia, even if it dies down, you know that it's on the tips of the people's tongues. When you ever seen leaders moving their family and relatives go to the go to the underground city where it's safe, right? They talking openly about nuclear war on the news. We told you about it, it's in the Bible. Babylon the Great gonna be destroyed. You people always knew that this was Babylon the Great deep down, you just didn't want to accept it. Now you're seeing the physical manifestation of the Lord on the earth, preaching his gospel, telling you to your face. How does that feel? It's got to be awesome, man. Wait till our relatives in the spiritual realm come back. <laughs> Those righteous of our families come back. They're going to be so happy. Your relatives are going to be so sad. You're going to have to go. You gonna got, you got to work, man. You got to build our kingdom up. It says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? You got to be sharp with it brothers and sisters y'all know that i'm just saying to the ones to the new people what manner of person are you to be should you be making a punk ass documentary about your life as a hebrew is like the truth how people did you wrong hell no the lord didn't send you here for that he sent you here to prophesy the word 
to uplift his name, his purpose on the earth. You're talking about yourself, man. Get with it, Jake. Get with it. Making documentaries about your life and all the camps, the camps are evil. Guess what the Lord about to do? He sent us here to prophesy and, and help the elect be sealed so they can get out of the destruction, man. You're talking about yourself. Damn, Jake. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? And the holy conversation don't mean all you do is, all I do is talk about the Bible. I show sure love the Lord. If loving the Lord is wrong, I don't want to be right. It's not talking about that. When you go into the word conversation, it's your manner of life, your conduct. What manner of persons are ye to be? You're supposed to be doing what the Lord said do. You're supposed to have your eye on, on, on uh, keeping your eye single, okay? That's what you should be doing. Worry about the things that pertain to the ministry as it pertains unto the elect, not to just yourself, right? You gotta be worried about the things that are on high. The Lord said, I am from, you are from beneath, I'm from above. We supposed to be concentrated on, on, on heavenly things while we on the earth, see? It says, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire, what could catch the heavens on fire? What could catch the heavens on fire? Nuclear missiles, nuclear destruction. It's been estimated that they burn at roughly 1 million degrees Fahrenheit. The oxygen would be on fire, the hydrogen, the nutrient, the nitrogen, the nitrogen, the oxygen, the hydrogen, and the, and the nitrogen will be on fire. All the elements are gonna burn and be melted. This is seriously hot stuff. But guess what? The electric gonna burn up. They're going to be saved. And there's going to be a lot of crying, a lot of begging and pleading with the Lord. And it's going to be too late in that day. These things are prophesied in the Holy Bible. And it is our privilege to deliver them unto you, to tell you about it. You see? That's why we can't be bought off. We can't be, we ain't going to sell out. This is our joy to tell you of your destruction. This is what we've been sent to do. We've been sent, we are the heralds. We come before to tell you of the coming of the just one, who you have been now, the betrayers and the murderers, like it says in the book of Acts. We're here to prophesy the coming of the day of the Lord and the day of judgment. This is our purpose. This is our purpose. Looking for and hasting until the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What? in the hell do you think that's talking about? All you naysayers, you cannot get around all these scriptures telling you this. You can keep trying to explain it away all you want to. The only thing you're going to do, you're just reserving yourself as the law reserves in the vision for judgment. Let's get, let's get it real quick. Let's get it. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment. To be punished. See that? People are reserved until the day of judgment to be punished. They can't get right. They can't find the Lord. They can't make him their personal savior. None of that shit. Unless you're chosen, you are going to be destroyed in Babylon the Great. And that's it. Whether you're Israelite, Edomite, whatever. Only the Israelites can be saved to begin with. But if you're, hey, but you can even be destroyed if you're an Israelite. That's how this is going down. So all that, that extra energy you spend in talking about us, talking about our clothes, saying things about us, trying to dig up lies and, and make up, you know, cartoons or whatever you're doing, putting our faces on other bodies. That's all right. Go ahead and do it. It's been allotted unto you this time that you can do that. But shortly, the Lord is going to send those nuclear missiles and they're going to snack on your flesh. Right? Let's go to Isaiah 34, verse 1. If we can get that. And you know, I got a few other scriptures here before we go there. And I'll also visit the comment board. Let's see what we got. This is in 2nd Ezra, backing up what's written in Malachi. And another thing, when you're reading the scriptures, the Most High showed different prophets the same prophecy. He showed Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Zechariah, right? He showed them the nuclear destruction. He showed Ezra, he showed John the Revelator. These same things being repeated, they never, a lot of them never even met each other. And they wrote down specific prophecies coming from the Lord that prove that is true. And in this day, the Lord sent the prophets back to tell you, right, that we can describe in our language now what they couldn't describe. 
they didn't know that it was nuclear missiles. They said it was fiery flying serpents, right? These are uh, uh, these these uh, this great army that look like uh, uh, warriors going into battle with breastplates of jacinth and fire and brimstone. That's nuclear missiles, man. Right? It said out of their out of their mouths poured fire and brimstone. That's all nukes. That's nuke talk. This is Second Estrus. Just hold on here. This is, hold on brother, I got the scripture, I just, I lost it, okay. Second Ezra chapter 4, very vivid, verse 48. So I stood, let me, let me actually go to the verse, to the chapter. This is Second Ezra chapter 4, verse 47. It says, and he said unto me, stand up upon thy right side and I shall expound the similitude unto you. The Most High is going to show Ezra a vision, right? He says, So I stood and saw, and behold, a hot burning oven passed by before me. And it happened that when the flame was gone by, I looked and behold, the smoke remained still. Doesn't it describe, Malachi described that burning oven, the smoke remaining, that's in Revelation, right? It said the smoke of their burning is going to go up forever and ever. The smoke of her burning is going to be seen by the other nations when they look across the sea. They're going to see Babylon the Great on fire. And all you lawyers and doctors and dentists and counselors and welfare people and court bailiffs and, and cops and uh, meter maids, all these little menial jobs you got in Babylon the Great, you are all equally guilty together. All the Edomites from all generations over here in Babylon the Great, whatever jobs you had, all you're going to get burned up. White Jesus ain't going to get you out of this because he don't exist. He doesn't exist. White Jesus does not exist. Only the Savior from the Bible who is not a white guy. He's not an Edomite. He's not a leprous dog. He doesn't exist. That guy you talking about. His name is Shai, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And he's going to usher in the nuclear missiles. And he's going to snatch his elect out of the way in the nick of time. And it's not called a rapture, by the way. It's the great taking up or the deliverance of the house of Israel. That's what it's called. What's the difference, brother? It's rapture. It ain't the rapture. Rapture is a whole other doctrine. We can go into that at another time. Let's now get, let's go to the comment board, see what brothers got. See if I can pull anything off of them. So let's do that. Y'all hold on here. Come on, man. So as you can see, I'm in a mood. The spirit is on brothers throughout the truth. See it? This is great. GMS Army of 144 Ba, Elder Monogon for the DC Cap. Shalom, Elder. Zephaniah 118. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. Woo. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. That's right, you see? You ain't gonna be able to, hey, your bribes, your gold, your silver, it's gonna be all devoured over here in Babylon the Great. You're not gonna take any gold and silver like this doctrine going around. The second exodus, brother, we're gonna get on airplanes or uh, some vessels with all this silver and gold. No, it's not gonna happen, man. Either the elect gonna beam you, or uh, either the most high gonna beam you up into the chariots as the elect, or you're gonna be doomed. That's the, that's the only way you're leaving. You can try to leave on your own, but when you go to other parts of the earth, it's also gonna be rocked by nuclear destruction. We can prove it. We can prove it. Great scriptures, brothers. I can't read them all, y'all know that. And you, you, you sisters, try to be respectful, right? Try to abide by the rules. That way the brothers don't have to block you, okay? We're not against you, but you gotta keep the order. Keep the order. So let me go here to Revelation. First, I'm gonna go to Isaiah 34. We'll link this together if we can. Isaiah 34, right? Here it is. Isaiah 34 and verse one says, Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein. There you go. The gospel is preached to all nations. You happy now, Christians? Still ain't gonna get you saved, okay? You're not going to make it out of here if you're not an Israelite. 
The Lord did tell us the noise abroad the gospel to every in every place. The nations got to know their judgment. The Israelites have to know they need to repent. And we're scattered in every nation. Let's read that again. Come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. Don't skip past that. The Lord is mad with all the nations and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. We say World War III, the Bible says Armageddon, that's what they're gonna be delivered to. The Most High said in Joel chapter three, he's gonna gather all the nations in that valley so he can judge them. It's a part of the judgment of the Lord. Their slain also shall be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses and the mountains shall be melted with their blood and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved sound familiar second peter three right all these things shall be dissolved right and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falling off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree it's talking about the heavens being rolled together as a scroll this is a move what we call a mushroom cloud, what the white man calls a mushroom cloud, right? The nuclear missiles come down, they explode, great plume of fire, smoke, heat, radiation goes up and it rolls up under itself. It unfolds under itself and it goes out among the whole land. And there's gonna be many of these explosions across Babylon the Great, destroying the whole place, blasting it out of existence. It says, for my sword, my sword, this is the Lord speaking, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, and upon the people of my curse to judgment, the same folks. They're the people of the Lord's curse to judgment. They were put here for a day, hour, month, and a year to get that judgment of the Lord. That's what it's here, what they're here for. They, they did their job. They were supposed to punish the Israelites and punish the world, right, as a sword of the Lord. Good job, Esau. You fulfilled your work. Almost time for you to go into the pit and us to come up on top of you. And we got to fulfill our part of prophecy. Now we got to take you over. The elder shall serve the younger. That's you. You're the elder. We're the younger. You're going to serve us for a thousand years. Then you got to go. Then you have to be destroyed. Let's, let's back this up. So if you go to Revelation, now it said that's going to happen to Idumia, right? If you go to Revelation chapter 6, See how the Lord does that? Old Testament and new together. And we may come back to that, that, uh, that verse or that chapter. So this is going to be Revelation chapter 6 now. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12. Listen. And behold, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake. Going back to all the scriptures we read, Isaiah 24, what did it say? The earth is going to reel to and fro like a drunkard. The windows from on high open. The foundations of the earth do shake. It's all there, right? And the sun became black as sackcloth in the great earthquake, right? And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Have you not been seeing the stars fall into the earth? All the different celebrities dying, giving up the ghost. Yeah, you've been seeing that, right? Listen to this. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. If you look in the column, the precept says, Esaias 34 and verse four. Can't get around it, man. So while it's talking about Babylon the Great in Revelation, it was talking about Idumia in Isaiah 34. What does that mean? What does that mean? It's talking about America, Babylon the Great being ruled and in an uh, authority over by Esau, Edom, the children of Edom, the so-called white man. Take a bow. Take a bow, Esau. You've been revealed over and over. That's why you take our videos down. It's okay. We ain't even mad about them channels. Everything is recorded in heaven. All our videos that we did, you can't get away from all that prophecy. You can't do it. It's over. It's over. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved 
out of their places. What that mean? It's gonna be so much tumultuous explosions on the planet that not only Babylon the Great, when it's destroyed, if you try to run down to Jamaica or to the, or the islands in the sea or to another place, man, it's gonna be total destruction. If you in, if you try to go into the sea, when the nuclear destruction, because all you Israelites think you're gonna leave on boats and shit, when the nuclear destruction come, tidal waves are gonna be breaking off into the oceans, man. All across the world, islands gonna be going out of sight, going down into the water. The mountains gonna be falling down to plains. They're gonna be laid flat by the destruction. All types of torrential rains, tidal waves, acid rain, right? We imagine that uh, funnel clouds gonna be coming down. Cyclones and tornadoes gonna be spinning out. Acid rain, like we mentioned, man. Nuclear winter and fallout down here on the planet. While the elect is going into the chariots to go into the wilderness. Jake loves to talk about the wilderness. This is when the elect goes to the wilderness to a place of safety for a period of time. And then we come back and we take over the whole world, right? The place of safety, to be more specific, is the chariots. We're gonna be hidden up there. But there is a place, the, the uh, wilderness is mentioned in, in uh, Ezekiel. Now, going on, so it says the islands and mountains were moved out of their places, right? Now I want to get something here. Let's go to Revelation 16, I believe. Yeah. This is Revelation 16 and verse 17. And the seventh angel powered out Salaki. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and there was a great earthquake. You hear it? A great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came and remembered before the Most High to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed the Most High because of the plague of hell, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. What's happening right here? The nuclear missiles coming down out of heaven, burning men. Right? Then they're going to blaspheme the Lord when he don't save them. They're going to see the chairs come, save the elect. They're going to be, oh, no, God. I pulling their beards out if they got beards. Pulling their hair out, gnawing their fingernails off, crying, snotting all over the place. Some people having heart attacks, throwing up, puking, petrified for fear that's about to come upon them or for the punishment that's about to come upon them. Island's going to be disappearing into the sea, being flooded, sinking into the waters, people dying, giving up their last breath. It's going to be total devastation, but not for the elect. It's all prophesied in the Bible. And this is talking about Babylon the Great first and foremost, and then the nations of the, of the earth, different cities. We don't know exactly which ones. They're going to be surprised. We know that more than likely London going to get hit. More than likely, we know Russia going to get hit, certain parts of it, right? But America going to be totally destroyed. The Holy Land going to be completely destroyed over there because we got to rebuild it. Nuclear war gonna be happening. It's gonna be a lot going on, man. See, so you new Israelites that's coming into the faith with your mouth open, close your damn mouth up. You don't really understand yet. You haven't fully taken in what the Lord is about to do. And while he's doing all this destruction, on the other side gonna be deliverance. Listen to this. On the other side gonna be deliverance. It's gonna be untold millions being killed by the Lord in that day. As I like to say, the Lord is going to set a brand new death high score in the earth. More people ever killed or more people will be killed at one time in one day than ever been in the history of the planet. And that's going to be given to the Lord of hosts. Praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah for his great con conquest. And who you hear in the background? Fucking nigga woman and little baby niggas dancing. Hey, hey, doing that. That's going to be cut off. Can't wait. course somebody has blonde hair when you know it so this is Isaiah 26 verse 20 it says come my people enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee who are the Lord's people the Israelites come my people more importantly the elect 
Come, my people, enter down to thy chambers. You're going to be going for heavenly glory. And while you're going up, you're going to be getting changed into new bodies that live for eternity, immortality, eternal life. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment. Until, until what? Until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. You see that? The Lord's going to punish these people for all their iniquity. And the elect is going to be safe, taken safely away. You're going to be told rest for a little season, right? Go here and enjoy. We don't know what's going to be. Brothers had dreams about it, right? There's going to be food there. We don't know exactly. We don't know. That right there is we know in part, we prophesy in part. We can tell you that the Lord is going to deliver us, but we don't know what's going to be going on. We're going to be getting prepared to come back down here and take over the planet. But first, it's going to be the wedding feast of the Lamb. People got to get crowns and accolades, right? You're going to see the Lord. Of course, we're going to be all crying, right? Looking at him, you know, wondering at his beauty, looking at the angels, all that. It's going to be, we can't even tell you, man. That right there is a whole nother thing. We don't know how long we're going to be up there before we come down into the wilderness and then how long we're going to be in the wilderness. We can't tell you that. After the smoke clear, the Lord going to say, he's going to give us a signal and then the real fun going to begin. New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven as a bride preparing the door for her husband. Then we take over the whole planet. That's a whole nother part of it. See? Let's get another description. And let's go to the chapter 27. Because, see, this is punishment for the devil. Not the spiritual demon Satan, but for his children with his spirit, the Edomites on the earth. Now, it says the deliverance of Israel, Isaiah 27, verse 1. In that day, the Lord with his sword and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent. Even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. What's this talking about? It's talking about the great empire is going to be punished. And that Leviathan, Esau, even the so-called white man, that snake, that serpent, that slithery individual, he going to be destroyed, man. His empire is going to crumble. He's going to be taken down. The dragon that's in the sea, what are they doing to Russia right now? They're putting a trade embargo and sanctions on them. Stopping them from trading certain things. Stopping them from having certain items. Make, uh, using the nations as puppets to back them into a corner. How can he do that? Because he got rulership over the whole earth. He don't even give a damn about his own brothers on the other side. Because them Russians, they eat mice too. They don't care. Babylon the Great is run amok over the earth. And the Lord got to get rid of this devil, man. The Roman Empire will be no more. That's really just what it is. The Roman Empire. America, Babylon the Great is the, is the whore on the back of that, that great dragon steering it. Telling it where to go. Right? All of it is there. See? But... The Israelites going to be delivered. Let's go to Isaiah, I'm sorry, Revelation 11 and around about verse 11, I believe. Right? Verse 12. This is the Israelites. It says, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. See? This is the elect being take, taken up into the chariots. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. This cloud is the chariots. These many different flying vessels, we say spaceships, we say UFOs, you don't like that, right? You can give it a name. It's flying vessels from the Lord. The armies of heaven in vehicles. These are the chambers of Isaiah 26 and 20. Enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. These vessels, they fly, they have doors, they have lights and windows all over them. That's what they are. You don't like that, do you? We know, <laughs> we know. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Where was our enemies at? They was down here looking up. Where did they go? Right? The enemies saw the Israelites get beaten up into the chariot. But if God loved everybody, why he didn't save everybody up into the chariot? Why even send the destruction if you love everybody? Think about it. Now, as we go up into the chariots, verse 13 says, In the same hour was there a great earthquake when we talked about the earthquake earlier that's the nuclear missile causing a great earthquake so great an earthquake never been seen the likes of 
the same hour as the elect left, there was a great earthquake. So they're not here during that time. They got saved out of it, right? In the same hour, was there a great earthquake and the 10th part of the city fell. Why does it say that? Babylon the Great is divided up into 10 FEMA zones. Whether you know it or not, you don't believe us, look it up. Roman numerals, 10 different FEMA zones, different regions of the country divided up. The Lord gonna destroy all of those things. Shalom, Elder Hawaii. And the 10th part of the city fell. What parts one through nine, because the, the fire gonna sweep across. We don't know how it's gonna happen from east to west, west to east, north to south, off all these above. We don't know how the fire gonna come in, but it's gonna sweep. It's gonna destroy one portion at a time. And then finally the 10th part gonna be destroyed. And the 10th part of the city fell, and in the earthquake was slain of men 7,000. The seven meaning completion, the thousand meaning complete numbers of individuals were killed and died in Babylon the Great. They got all burnt up and messed up, turned into ashes like that by the Lord, right? And in the earthquake was slain of men 7,000, and the remnant who were not part of the destruction, which that's the elect, the remnant were affrighted. They were very afraid at what they saw coming. They looked down from heaven and they saw Babylon the Great getting destroyed. Oh, ain't that day day? Oh, he got burned up. <laughs> ain't that Fred and, and Rico then? Oh, they got burnt up by the missiles. Oh, damn. Big Mama Weave got burnt up. See? You're going to be astonished at what you're seeing. We're going to be affrighted. Lord willing, we make it. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. So you're going to be, oh, Lord, I made it. Oh, it's you, brother. You made it. Oh, praise you. How about you? I was shy. Right? In that day, you're going to be giving the Lord praise, honor, and glory like never before, man. We're going to be laboring to give the Lord praise that we made it out of destruction and he conquered our enemies. And we got new bodies. Look at that. Oh, I'm young again. Right? You're going to be young again in your vitality with spiritual power, the law, your inward parts, all that. All the things we talk about. But, but going further into it, we can't really tell you. We can't tell you how we're going to look. You know, what kind of glow we're going to have. How tall we're going to really be. We can't tell you that. We know in part, we prophesy in part. Doesn't mean that men don't have 100% truth. We can't tell you what the Lord going to look like. What's his chariot going to look like? Is his name going to be on the chariot, brother? We don't know. We don't know. Right? They hate us. We hate you back. But we still love you. <laughs> We hate to love you, right? We love to hate you. Because we know y'all are, you know, Esau Edom is our twin brother. We don't love him as in affection. We love you by keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. And we pray our type, your type, of, our type of judgment comes on you. Because we had it happen to us. Now you got to get it. Deuteronomy chapter 30, right? Our enemies got to have the curses put on them. They're going to get it, man. Now the same day that the Lord takes us out of this place and we get the new bodies, this is what's said. First, I'm going to just go right to the point. Revelation 22 and 3. And there shall be no more curse. The curse of Deuteronomy going to be taken off of us. When the Lord comes and he changes our bodies and we go up into the chair, we through without punishment. We've done. Righteousness and peace and riches and, and all those things that the Lord going to give us forevermore. All the bad things going to our enemies. That's why in the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, it said that what? The rich man had all these beautiful things, right? But now he's going to be punished and Lazarus is going to be in glory. The Israelites are Lazarus in that parable. The rich man is Esau, even the so-called white man. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. You see? And I mean, that ain't even, even going into the slavery of the nations, right? The punishment that's going to be put on them, the spiritual power, how we're going to fight and do all these different things, man, it's going to be awesome, man. And Lord willing, we all make it. We make it to see that. Because so many people ain't going to make it. You got to be special, special to the Lord as his chosen. Then you get to see all those great things. See it? That's right, brother. Brother got the missiles and the fire. Hey, going to burn this place up. Going to burn this place up, man. Hold on here. All right. Let's see what we got in the comment. We'll see if we can get anything off of it. This is, uh, and there are many other scriptures that talk about the nuclear destruction, okay? 
we'll be here all day reading all the, all the different scriptures. But there are a lot of vivid ones, and there's some that's, you know, you have to do a little bit of thinking and a little bit of figuring, but it's right there. Yeah, man, this is uh, Azan Amar, Revelation chapter 9, verse 18. It says, by these three was the third part of men killed. What's the third part of men? Men are broken up into three classifications. You got the sons of the righteous, which is the Israelites, the sons of men, which are the other nations, and the sons of the wicked, which is Esau, Edom, so-called white men, all around the earth, but ruling in Babylon the Great. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. The nuclear missile is going to open up and out of the mouth of it going to pour out fire, smoke, brimstone, right? Radiation, Neptunium, Plutonium, whatever it is, uranium, all mixed together to create that, that, uh, that, that reaction, right? That, that uh, what is it called? Combustible reaction that's going to have. Sulfur, brimstone, all that, man. It's going to be a great day. A great day for the Israelites, a great day for the Lord, but not so great for the nations, man. And I mean, shoot, for real, we can really stop right there. I mean, a lot more great scriptures that we could read, but the point is made. And I really want to keep it around about an hour. So you see, the nuclear devastation, nuclear war, nuclear devastation is prophesied. We can also go to Joel chapter 3. You go to Ezekiel 39, right? Talk about the war. It's several places in the Psalms where the Lord going to rain fire and brimstone and leave but a six part of uh, uh, the... Uh, a six part of the different uh, uh, soldiers that go, the wine press is part of it, the chariots coming back, zapping with nuclear, with uh, concentrated fire, which we say laser beams. There's so many different different uh, facets to the coming of the Lord, to the nuclear destruction, to the nuclear war. We can't cover it all in one nation. I mean, in one uh, one video, so like in one lesson is what I meant to say. You see? This is Joel 1 verse 15 from Yasharala Banyamyan. Alas, for that day is great. Salakia. Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. That's right. As a destruction from the Almighty. There's, it's in many other places, man. Let's go real quick to, to Isaiah 13. That just made me think of that. And we can get one more after that. There's another vivid scripture I want to get. Let's, we're going to go to that one, if I remember, Lord willing. So this is Isaiah 13. In verse 6, it says, How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. You mean it's going to be great fear. And they shall be afraid. Pains and sorrows shall take hold of them. And they shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. You see that? The Lord about to get down. He's going to do a lot of punishing. See? Yeah, Fisher Turn Hunter, Psalms 11 and 6. Upon the wicked, he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and in horrible tempest, this shall be the portion of their cup. And they're going to drink it down. And nobody can stop it. Nobody can stop it. Let's get second Esdras, a favorite now. Second Esdras chapter 16. And I'm going to go to verse... I'm going to go to verse 4. It says, A fire is sitting among you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sitting... It's like it. A sword is sitting upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sitting among you, and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may, may drive them away? May any man drive away the hungry lion in the wood, and may anyone quench the fire and stubble when they have begun to burn. Now, there was a group out of Baltimore that had a problem with this scripture. They said that we were going off for the way we teach it, because it ain't talking about missiles, it's talking about the different plagues. Well, it is talking about plagues but the missiles are also described as a plague and certain scriptures as you read down make it abundantly clear just talk about nuclear missiles it goes on it says may 
uh, may one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? Right? The, the missiles are also called a plague of hell. That's going to be part of it. But what other plagues? Flooding, natural disasters, torrential rains, tornadoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, tidal waves, acid rain. Plagues. So lock it. Going on, it says, the mighty Lord sent the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? A fire shall go forth from his wrath, and who is he that may quench it? What? Fire coming forth from the Lord's wrath. He said that the fire of his jealousy is going to devour the whole land. How's the fire going to come? Is the Most High going to just concentrate real hard, and fire going to just burst out? No. He's going to send the nuclear missiles. The instruments that prepare for his work. He shall cast out lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? The Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? We know that the Lord is going to have thunder, thunder and lightning. The sky is going to get dark. Some people report dreams. They see the sky turn red and black. Okay, the nuclear missile is going to still come. Listen, it says the earth quaking and the foundations thereof. There's a great earthquake. The sea arises up with waves from the deep and the waves of it are troubled and before the glory of his power. So lock it. And the waves of it are troubled and the fishes thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. Listen to this. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow and his, uh, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they shall begin to be shot into the ends of the world. Back and forth, arrows being shot by the Lord. Arrows coming from Russia, coming to America. Arrows shot from America, going over to Russia. One end of the earth to the other, right? And Australia could get hit. Japan could get hit. We don't know, but we know Babylon the Great will get hit with them arrows from the Lord. Nuclear missiles. It says, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. They ain't talking about no lightning bolts, no thunder. It's talking about missiles being shot from the nations by the Lord, from one end of the earth to the other. That's why they call intercontinental ballistic missiles from one continent to another continent. That's why they call that. Jake stopped being puffed up and being proud. You learn from our elders and apostles and from us. You can't rewrite the book. It says, behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. And as we said, some of the plagues are the missiles, man. Oh ye great hailstones. Let's see if we can get that. And then we'll shut it down. This is Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 38, I'm just gonna go to 21. It says, and I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord Power. Every man's sword shall be upon his, against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. This is that plague of hell that the Lord talked about. There's another one too though. See? Ezekiel 13 and verse 10. Because even because they have seduced my people saying peace and there was no peace and one built up a wall and lo others daubed it with untempered mortar this is a wall of lies false religion being built up by esau edom and then you had israelite fake prophets preachers come behind him and they help put on the uh the untempered mortar on that wall to keep it going the wall of lies see it and one built up a wall and lo others daubed it with untempered mortar 
saying to them which daub it with untempered mortar that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstone, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. What's the stormy wind? That's the great wind that's going to destroy, you know, that it held back the, the, uh, the uh, as it says in Revelation 7, that the angels held back the, the, the great destroying wind. That's what it is, the destroying wind. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstone, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is falling, shall it be said unto you, where is the daubing wherewith ye have daubed it? What you gonna do now? Your wall of lies is falling, right? Therefore, thus said the Lord power, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in my anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. So will I break down the wall that ye have daubed with untempered mortar and bring it down to the ground so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered. And it shall fall and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar and will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither they which daubed it. To wit, the prophets of Israel which prophesy concerning Jerusalem and which see visions of peace for her and there is no peace, saith the Lord power. So the false prophet Israelites, going, even if you don't call yourself that, your Creflo dollars, your T.D. Jakes, your, your, your um, Omar Thibodeau's Hebrews like Christians, Right? You're going to be all burnt up, man. All of you going to be burnt up. You help the devil with his plan. You help keep that, that same image on Jake. You kept dumbing the people down. You won't teach the right doctrine. All you AO, what's these people called? The, the, Israel, the Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ. Right? There's, there's other churches. The, the Israelite Christian churches in Chicago and them different places. All y'all teaching lies. You Jewish Israelites, the Lord going to get all you people, man. And let's finally go to, we're going to shut it down after this. See that nuclear war, it's gonna be the nuclear war, but the nuclear devastation gonna reach Babylon the Great too. And the people of the Lord, the Israelites that are wicked, that are not the chosen, they're gonna be burned up. This is Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 18. Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. They are all brass and tin and iron and lead. In the midst of the furnace, they are even the dross of silver. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, because you are all become dross. Behold, therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. So over here in Babylon the Great, wherever the Israelites are, it's speaking of those places, right? It ain't talking about the Holy Land. Even though the Holy Land is going to get hit with nuclear missiles, this is talking about Babylon the Great. As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace, to blow the fire upon it, to melt it, so will I gather you in my anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Yeah, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I, the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, have poured out my fury upon you. So go back to Isaiah 26, Revelation 11, when the, when the Lord said, come my people, enter down to thy chambers, he was talking to the elect. All those that are not among the elect that are Israelites, you're gonna be the ones that he's gonna leave you there and melt you. Let's get one last one, Revelation 18 and four. When the Lord take up the elect, this is what's gonna be said. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, a lot of Jakes break this scripture down wrong. You keep saying this means you're gonna come out of the ways of Babylon. It's not what it's talking about. This is in coincide, this coincides with Isaiah 26 and 20, Revelation 11 and 11 or 12, where the Lord said, come, out, come up hither. This is the taking up of the elect. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues, see? As a matter of fact, if you go down to verse 20, it says this, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for the Most High has avenged you on her. You go up into the heavens, up into the chariots, 
This is the Lord telling you he's going to take revenge on our enemies. You're going up into the chariots and you're going to know the Lord taking revenge. He says, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Right? The great millstone is the nuclear missiles being thrown into the sea, which is the people. Kindreds, multitudes, and tongues. The missile's going to come and they're going to destroy the people. The elect is going to be taken out of the way. See? So, you know, we can hit it right there. I mean, there's a lot more to it. A lot more scriptures we can go to. Right? But we don't have to. Okay? Great scriptures, brothers. All right? The water for hanging in there with me and for joining in with the lesson. And we're going to go ahead and shut it down. Got more lessons prepared for later on today. If we get around to it, Lord willing, we will. Which is no reason why we shouldn't. The new moon coming in at sundown, wherever you are, right? With sundown here is probably around about on the, well, I can't say for the whole East Coast, but my sundown here is going to be, let's see what time it's going to be. It's now 4.05 Eastern Standard Time. Sundown is going to be, can't get it down suddenly. Sundown is going to be 6.12 p.m. Here in South Carolina, where, where I'm in. The different cities got different sundowns. So about two hours from now, it's going to be the new moon, right? And that's going to establish the Sabbath for the rest of the month, for the new month. See? That's what's going down. So to water everybody for joining in, for listening, for watching. See your brothers and sisters out there, watch as well as pray. And we all know that nuclear war and devastation is prophesied in the Holy Bible, is it not? And you're going to see many more lessons from brothers. Everybody's got it on the tip of their tongues, man. We all excited. But don't get too, too excited because the end is not yet, right? You got to prepare yourself for spiritual disappointment because that happens. You get so high up, you think we're about to be delivered. Then they go and say Russia took all their military and their weapons and went home. You'd be like, oh, man. So, you know, hold tight. Keep doing the work. Keep enduring. All right? We're going to say all praise to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rukakadash. And double honor to the apostles that there was a great millstone. Shalom to the hope we let. All right. We'll see you again soon, Lord.